emerging confidently from darkness and silence. She won over her blindness and deafness. Armed with curiosity and imagination, she was grateful for the senses and skills she possessed. Meet Helen Keller, whose life is a classic example of unflattering determination. Detailing her experience from childhood to the age of 21 and the beautiful relationship she shared with Anne Macy Sullivan, her governess and companion. This video is an engaging account of Helen Keller's growing up years. Helen Keller was born in 1880 in Tuscumbia, Alabama to author and Kate Keller. Author owned a cotton plantation and later worked for a newspaper while Kate traced the family on their farm. When Helen was 18 months old, she became very sick with fever. She survived but lost her sight and hearing. It was difficult for Helen to commune. Helen loved the farm animals and playing with her younger siblings, Mildred and Philip. But her parents were desperate to ease her sense of isolation. They were introduced to Alexander Graham Bell, who was working with deaf children at that time. The Perkskill Institute of Blind sent a recent graduate Anne Sullivan to work with Helen at home. Anne went blind as a child, although surgery restored some of her sight. This loving and determined teacher became Helen's helper and friend for almost 50 years. Anne began to teach Helen words by using a type of finger spelling. She would give Helen an object and press the letters into her other hand. Then one day, Anne used running water and spelled water. Suddenly, Helen understood him. And by the end of the day, they had learned 30 words. By the age of 10, Helen could read Braille and use a typewriter. She was desperate to talk. So Anne sought the help of another specialist. Sarah Fuller taught Helen to touch other people's throat and mouth as they spoke, to feel the movements and sound vibrations. She began learning letters, sounds and words and sentences. Helen could not hear herself but was delighted to have a voice of her own. At a number of special schools, Helen even learned to read French, German, Greek and Latin. She became famous and met many influential people. At 16, Helen went to Radcliffe College with the help of Annie. She also became the first deaf-blind person to gain a degree in 1904. During her time in college, Helen wrote an autobiography, The Story of My Life, which was translated into more than 50 languages. More books followed, including The World I Live In, which was written in 1908. When Anne died in 1936, Polly Thompson, the long-serving secretary, took over as Helen's constant companion. After college, Helen spent many years raising awareness of people with disabilities. In 1920, she co-founded the American Civil Liberties Union and was also an advocate of women's rights. She raised money for disability charities, gave comfort to disabled soldiers in hospitals during the war and travelled the world giving lectures on the rights of blind and deaf people. Helen suffered a series of stroke in 1961 and spent her last years at home. She died in her sleep, aged 87, at the end of a unique and truly remarkable life. <laughs>